Hey everybody, I am Dr. Jackie Sanderlin and I am so excited um, to have a new guest today as we talk about um, their why not moments. And so as you know, this is just an opportunity to hear um, from other individuals' perspectives on when was the moment that they decided to say why not instead of why. And so yeah. <laughs> um, it's just two questions that changed my life. Right. as an educator and I remember the time that I said why not right. and when I was a principal in a very under-resourced community when I said those two words doors just flew open right, right. and they never never closed yeah and so we have Baishaki Sana here who I am just so she came into my life just like a couple of weeks ago and her work. And I want you to introduce yourself because sure. there's just so much to tell about you. So do you mind just sharing about what you do every day? Okay, thank you for uh, bringing me here and uh, letting me share this space with you. I'm so honored thank to you. be here talking with you about this and I'm so inspired by what you do and stuff like that. So I'm an author, uh, I'm a motivational speaker, I've done a few quite a number of TEDx talks and I'm also a performer I'm a dancer and I've done a little bit of acting here and there uh, so I really love what I do but I was not always like this I remember when I was at university I had the best education the best college the uh, the best career and yet I was not happy because I felt like I was in the wrong career. I was studying computer science and it was something that uh, I just didn't want to pursue. Mm -hmm. And I had a scholarship for it. I was doing it and I couldn't stop it halfway. So I just felt stuck and I had no idea what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So when I finished my graduation, I took up a student exchange program and I started living across different continents, not just traveling, you know, so I lived not just for a couple of days or weeks, I lived for years, yeah. you know. So I was in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, in South America, Central America, North America, mm. and I was uh, staying with local people in their houses, wow. living with them, eating their food, uh, attending their traditional and religious functions, mm -hmm. working for them, contributing to their economy, uh, you know, perceiving their belief systems, their thoughts, uh, uh, how their minds work. So I never realized that I was studying life right. uh, through these um, uh, journeys, you know. But at the end of it, when I finished all these exchange programs, I realized that I had gained a huge perspective on how the world works, how different cultures and belief systems work. And sometimes the beliefs are dysfunctional, sometimes they are functional. And I started to play with these concepts, you know, and then I realized that uh, my real work, that which I absolutely love doing, yeah. is expanding consciousness on the planet because when we are in protection mode, when we are limiting ourselves, when we try to stay safe, we don't grow right. because we are living in fear. Wow. On the other hand, when uh, we have the courage, you know, to explore the world that we were born into, uh, to, to, you know, explore connection with people from different races, different cultures, customs, uh, um, religion and, you know, creed. So that's really when uh, life or world uh, starts speaking back to you. It's not always you speaking to life, you trying to make things happen. Uh, when you, you know, open yourself up, the, the universe actually starts communicating back to you and uh, uh, give you back a mirror of wow. what to do. Wow. You know, you're speaking directly to my heart and... This is the basis uh, and the foundation for the work I am involved yeah. in every day about community. Mm -hmm. And one of the most powerful things that I, I've, I've heard you say a lot of powerful things in two days. Um, but <laughs> one of the most powerful things I just heard was that it's allowing the com this community, the world, to speak back to you. Yes. 
And in yeah. order to do that, you have to be open to hearing yeah. from them and yes. and in position uh, yeah. to hearing from them. So when you talked about traveling and, and eating foods from different places and living and not really trying to change that environment, but becoming part of it, did you find that you were losing yourself in that? Many times. I will tell you why. It was what was happening was a process of purging mm. where my own strong conservative traditional belief systems yeah. uh, that I was born into, that I was taught was falling away. My belief systems were falling away. And there were times when I didn't know what to believe anymore. Mm. I felt lost. I felt confused. I didn't know what was right, what was wrong, because I realized many times that what was right and wrong in one culture was totally acceptable in another culture. So where do you draw the line? How do you behave? Sometimes I was behaving in strange ways. Sometimes I was behaving in a more matured way because I had more perspective that others didn't have. So of course I lost myself so many times, but now on hindsight, I realize that my own um, small beliefs, limiting beliefs were falling apart hmm. and my soul was expanding. So your soul was expanding. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is that possible? A soul can expand. Of course. When and expanding because because my because you allow more of yourself in. Wow. Yeah, and what is the definition of the self? What is the definition of myself? When when that definition is very limited, I am very protected, then I'm not growing. But yeah. when I expand that definition and I'm like all this is a part of me because I left a piece of myself in every place where I lived. <laughs> and I picked up pieces of those places which are now a part of me. Like, you know, when people say, where are you from? I'm very reluctant to say I'm from India. Correct. I and am from India, wow. but India is not me hmm. because I've lived in Africa. I have lived in South America and I have lived for years, you know, so I have groomed myself in that culture, you know, a part of that culture will always be a part of me. I'm so glad you're sharing that because we are all accustomed to answering that question, where are you from? Yeah. And what I'm hearing you saying, we're limiting ourselves. Yeah. By just saying, I'm from Texas or right. I am from uh, Africa or I am from Europe or you know yes. when you start to expand your soul yeah um which is I just love that by the way I I, uh -huh. I don't think I'm gonna forget that because I've been to many places too and but by going to those places I learned so much more about myself exactly in the end all of life is uh, a feedback of who you are because we see ourselves. So how do you everybody. respond? How do you respond then when someone says, "Where are you from?" Yeah. Ah. Uh, so you know, I say yes. <laughs> and, and, yes. And and sometimes people cannot guess. Like the oh, other day. Oh, you ask them to guess. Yeah. Oh, I see. I say guess. Uh, the other day, I was on an Uber mm -hmm. uh, here in LA, and you won't believe this. So this Uber guy, like we were sitting quiet for a while the driver yeah. and me i do that too yeah, yeah. then uh, suddenly we started talking and he asked me uh, where are you from and i said guess and guess what he said what did he say he said i am a latina like i'm from latin america and i laughed you know why because i have lived in latin america for the last 8 years right. in south america and central america and I sometimes feel that I've started looking like Latin women. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because in India, the way a woman dresses, the way a woman uh, uh, adorns herself is so different from the way the women dress in Latin mm. America. Mm. And when I wear more fitted clothes or, you know, yeah. uh, things like that, I actually look like a Latin woman, you know. So it was uh, uh, not hard for him to think that right. I would be from Latin America. And I said- And based are, on his stereotypes. Yeah, too. exactly. Mm -hmm. And I said, you are partially correct because I live in Costa Rica. And he was like, oh, wow. So- And then you're, and you speak Spanish. Yeah, I fluently. speak Spanish fluently. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I asked him, I said, are you Latino too? 
because he asked me if I was Latina. So I said, are you too? <laughs> and he was like, uh, yes and no. Oh, wow. Which was funny. And then I told him, well, I'm not a Latino. I was born in India and I'm Indian. And he said, oh, really? And I said, yeah. Then he said, I'm Indian too. And I couldn't. Oh my gosh! Are you serious? So you didn't even know. I couldn't even guess. And I'm like, okay, Indian, that's a why not yeah, moment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and I was like, Indian means, uh, um, you mean, uh, you mean here, like because the Red Indians, the natives, uh, American natives here. Right. Because even in my wildest dreams, I couldn't have guessed that he was from India, India. He had a piercing in his ears. He had this cap mm. on him and he was like really thin the way he dressed. Uh, he totally looked like a Latin man, you know? And then he told me that uh, his dad was Indian and his mom was Mexican. So he was <laughs> half Latin and half Indian. <laughs> and here I was who have lived in Latin America for so long. So I'm also in a way half Latin. Half <laughs> yeah, and that's true. <laughs> That's true. And you know what, in what you're speaking, really, I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking about how our beliefs, you know, uh, our stereotypes uh, can get us in trouble sometimes right, because right. we can't assume anything anymore. You exactly. know, you really can't. And that's good. It's like you get to know someone with fresh new perspective. Correct. Because the moment you say, oh, I'm Indian, I'm this, immediately you attach their culture. Correct, to them. correct. Like when people think that I'm Indian, immediately they think, oh, she must be this really conservative, traditional girl, even though not all people from India are like that. But that's, uh, that's the mm, mm, reputation that India has, you know, mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. are conservative, traditional background, because uh that's how most indians are when they are abroad right right i wouldn't generalize it because a lot of indians are not like that but True. a lot of them well are. when i went to kenya i had the same um you know issues that, that in, individuals thought i was originally you know or, or, or i lived there and it was my first time right, ever right. um i'm sure i do have ancestral ties that go yes. right there because they said i really kind of resemble um, individuals who are from their particular tribe and so I, I found that to be actually a compliment because yes. um, it made me see myself bigger yeah, my soul was that's expanded. a good one you know when other people say you are from their community that's amazing because true you think that you are much bigger than who you are right like, so that's good for all of us yeah. because you cannot first of all someone might see you um, through their eyes in a different way. And I think what we need to stop probably doing is pigeonhole people right. in one way or another. So that's a, that's a why not moment for me. Why not be open to what anybody says they are or guess right. what they are, you right. know? And, and also learning about individuals' cultures, I think um, pre opens and expands our soul as well. <laughs> <laughs> you love that term. I do, I know. I've said it like five times. Yeah, so, that's amazing. I, I, I want to ask you, um, because when was a why, I want you to kind of think and articulate when a why not moment came to you. Yeah. Um, you've done a lot of travel. You have crisscrossed this world. Um, you've met a lot of people, eaten a lot of food, cooked a lot of food, um, and have seen a lot of wonderful things, um, amazing things as well. Um, you know, you probably have a lot of why not moments. Right. Um, but what is one that you could share with our audience because of your expansive travel? Sure. So before I get into that moment, I want to say like when I was in school, when I was a kid, I always uh, liked uh, to tune into inspirational things, inspirational quotes. Mm -hmm. And my favorite quote, which I write everywhere, is this quote from George Bernard Shaw, mm -hmm. which says, you see things and you ask why i dream things that never were and i ask why not and when you told me that your incubation project is uh, about why not i was so impressed because it directly resonated with my own childhood visions my own childhood dreams and then this moment came in my life where I had to make a big decision. Mm. So I was in Singapore. I had 
this uh, uh, scholarship and I was studying there, you know, and I studied at one of the best universities of the world. Mm. I had like great education. I was in a great career and everybody in my career was expected to take a job in their own fields, right. in their own careers right. after they graduated. Mm. And uh, they even facilitated that because they gave us six months extra after our uh, education oh, to wow. find that job and uh, to settle in Singapore, you know, and uh, uh, work towards whatever we want to do, but in that system. Right. And in that moment, I asked myself when all my uh, uh, colleagues and all my friends, they were applying for jobs. I used to sit in my hostel room and I would stare at the blank wall and I would be thinking like, where am I headed? Mm. You know, and I, it was such a confusing moment for me. And I knew the path for me was the same as the path for everyone else. Like I was resisting the process of job application so much. And at the same time, I knew it was only a matter of time. I would have to do it because I would have to take the job and I would have to work there. But not something you didn't, but something you didn't want to do. Yeah, yeah. but I had no other option. Right. And, and then I was like, I wish I could get out of that place, out of this place. And then something inside me told me, why can't you? And I was like, but how? You know, I'm here in Singapore. The only other way I can get out mm -hmm. is go back to India. And I didn't want to go back to India. So what other option was there for me? You know, and I was like, this, this little voice inside told me like, you know, just open your eyes to the world yeah. and things will show up. Oh my gosh. And you won't believe. A wow. few days later, a friend of mine invited to this conference where they were facilitating students right. to do exchange programs to any country that you wanted. And I was sitting there and I was like, this is where I want to be. Wow. And I signed up for it and immediately I started, I took up these student exchange programs mm. and I started traveling. I went to Europe, I went to Asia, I went to Africa, I went to South America and I lived in all these places and that's when my adventure began. So that was the beginning. That, First, why not? After that, many why nots happened, you know, especially when I published my first book, I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I, right. I, I had been an avid reader all my life. Right. And when I published my own book, it was like I was scared. You yeah. know, it was such an intimate journey with myself. And uh, uh, I, I was myself resisting publishing it. You know, it was all these inner feelings and sentiments and emotions I had gathered through my travels. And suddenly one day I was like, why not? Wow. Why should I hide this? You know, people need to know what I went through, the confusion, the inner trauma, the turbulence that we all go through before we make those life-changing decisions. And that's how I published the book. So so these, these defining moments of, of my life yes. when I started that travel in Asia, and I was the only one who was able to get out of that a system you wow. know and and break free and go across the world and do this thing that i did without having any idea how it would all pan out for me but but, but see oh my gosh oh my gosh i don't even know where to begin it's like you keep going on because this is so awesome first of all i'm going to say this i'm so proud of you thank you um thank because you. only thing that keeps coming to me is this courage you're just this courageous person to get out and you said something another powerful thing that that life will show up yeah. you know opportunity sometimes we're chasing opportunities when we should just be open to opportunities yes you know when you are chasing opportunities you are already in a place of resistance really? so it doesn't come as easily but what you said when you're just open to opportunities it shows up and it feels magical you know i, I write about that in my book i actually say how is none of your business? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, you know, that, that, I don't, I, I don't get paid enough to know how. That's just none of my business. And it was none of your business. And look what happened. The travel around the world, because you were staring at the wall saying, you know, what do I do? I have no options here. And you didn't want to go back to India, but you had a desire. And I think that's where it begins. Yes. When you have a desire. Yeah. You know, I remember that years ago. When I was working with, I believe, I don't know, it was a company that was helping me to educate youth. And our first year was a three-year grant. And right. the very first year was called planning. Right. And they said, what do you desire? Wow. So, you know, I was thinking we were going to start a budget line and start writing down grants and having to get surveys. And it actually didn't involve that. The first thing was, the first action was, what do you desire? Right. So many of us sometimes don't even know what we desire. Um, and when you find that out, you don't have to do anything to make the desire happen. It shows up. Right. That's exactly what happened. The moment I opened myself that night, you know, Open staring yourself. at the walls, I was like, why not? You know, why can't I do something that I want to do? <laughs> you know, why do I have to be here just because they told me I have to be here, you know? in that moment like within a few days this opportunity showed up like how the Are universe responds to you it's crazy <laughs> a few Sometimes days it takes me takes my breath away i know it is so accurate it is so precise you know i wrote a book about this so my Can book you talk about yeah that? my upcoming book is called life is abracadabra life is abracadabra <laughs> yeah and <laughs> It has 21 <laughs> magical stories from my travels across the world wow. that will make anyone That's look a great at title, life by the way. with new eyes. The reason I made it like that is because I want to show people these abracadabra moments when yeah. they happen. And they are happening all the time. All you have to be and do is be open, open to those moments. Oh my gosh. And how they show up is just so magical that it takes my own breath away. This is what we can do then. So this is possible for all of us. All of us, but you cannot close your mind. See, it wasn't until I told myself right. that something else is out there for me, the opportunity didn't show up. I felt stuck. Wow. I felt, you know, that is the thing about being open. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't when I kept my mind closed. Right. I, you cannot see the opportunity. Even if it shows up, you right. cannot see it. Right. Because you're closed. So when you're open and you say that I deserve to I go deserve. for my desires, you know, that is when the universe brings you the opportunity and you are able to identify. It. But see, that's the very place that some we go wrong exactly that's the very and that's okay that's okay it's See, okay there is okay why is it okay because this is okay so i do a lot of work about synchronicity and signs and how the universe shows up right and you only get better and better at understanding and interpreting synchronicities by being willing to make mistakes being willing to make me let me just share Real quickly. Thank you for saying that because I don't know if you've heard this this saying that's been going around kind of popular in the last few years. Um, failure is not an option. It was an option for me. <laughs> See, this is the thing. Like when you put it Ask like my that, teachers. failure is not an option. It was on my report card. You know all the what time. I say? I say successive failures take you to success. Successive failures. Okay, what is a successive successive failure? failures? Is one failure after, after another, another failure after another failure? After oh, I see what so, you mean. So you learn all the ways of how things don't work for you. Right. So eventually, you know, you are left with no other option but for success to meet you. Wow. Because you were willing. So failure is okay. Yeah. Give yourself the permission to fail. To fail. Oh my gosh. You Give know. yourself the permission to make mistakes. That's how we're you are unconditionally present with yourself. Okay, but we're not taught that way. Yeah. So that is why our society has all these psychopaths. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, I yeah. agree with you. It's because we are not allowed to fail and we are called losers if right. we fail. 
Oh, that person is a loser. Oh my God, drug addict, stay away from him. My kid, stay away from him. It doesn't work like that because everyone, every human being yeah. is part of the same consciousness that you and I share. When we understand that, our soul expands. And giving ourselves space to fail. To fail. Because some of the greatest things I and learned. And not being judgmental about, about it. it. And not beating yourself up over yes. it. Because I, I, I'm honestly, I think most of the greatest um, lessons I've learned was when I failed. Exactly. And I, ne I, and I learned to navigate it a different way. And you also become humble and compassionate ah, so and modest. You know, those are things like when we are in pain is when we can understand other people's pain. Oh, yeah. It is when we don't allow our, ourselves only. to feel the pain. Yeah. We negate our own pains. Then we negate others' pains. And then we are walking zombies. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Like working on our Dead on arrival. So, yeah. Yeah, just walking. And, and we don't want zombies the on the planet. Walking dead. We want communities. No, no, I run from the walking dead. I run from <laughs> all of them. I do. I always say if there's a zombie apocalypse, I'm apocalypse, I'm out of here. Yeah. But you're right. You know, but see, it's people so true. Are, have become zombies because this this, this pressure to perform yeah. all the time is taking people to two different extremes. Either you go to the heights of it, you know, and you eventually become a zombie over there right or you give up you you, you have a breakdown you yes. have a, a psychological breakdown then you go to a mental hospital oh and my you know, so so it's creating these extreme pola these polarities extreme. because we yeah. humanity oh, yeah. we don't allow ourselves to make mistakes we don't allow, allow ourselves to fail we beat ourselves up we are never unconditionally loving towards ourselves and that is what the universe reflects back to us you know, the universe is so generous. The universe is so kind. Yes. The universe is such a friendly place to be. The universe is always on your side that it will give you exactly what you expect. Wow. Okay, you have to say that again. The universe is so generous. The universe is so kind. The universe loves you so much that it will give you exactly what you expect. Do you have enough room in your expectations for yourself? Ah, ah! Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I am excited about this. I'm telling you, this aligns to something I thought about last Sunday. I said to myself, it's like a cup. Yes. A cup is only going to have the capacity of that which it is made for. Right. Right. So the question is, and it's so beautiful that you, you articulated that so beautifully. I've never thought of it that way about the universe being so kind, so loving that it gives you back. Really, if you have the capacity to receive that. Right, right. Then it will come to you. Yes. And you know, when I say it gives you what you expect, you should take that literally. Because oh. like I said, when I expect... You know, when I say to myself, I'm not allowed to fail, you know, I'm not allowed to make mistakes. I beat myself up. Why? Because at some level, I feel that when I make mistakes, when I fail, I will not be accepted in society. Others will look down upon me. I will be made fun of. I would be called a loser. And that's what I get. So that's what, because that's what you expected. Me. That's what I expected. Okay, so so and 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 then it becomes a self fulfilling prophecy because oh. then we don't want to fail and you know we beat ourselves up. In the end, you know, we we are still at a place of self rejection and and we still have to see nobody can escape themselves. No, we all come here to have an experience of ourselves. Even love that we think you know we are giving love to others, we are still uh, experiencing that love. For ourselves, even when I love you, I am actually loving me. So everything that we experience is actually personal because you are the only person through whose filters you will have an experience of yourself. Hmm. Everything that you perceive in the world is right. through your own mirrors, your own filters yep. of reality. Wow. So even when you think you're doing something for someone else, it is still going through your own filter. And maybe that act is bringing you joy and satisfaction and, and that is fulfilling your soul. So in some ways, you're still doing it for yourself. 
you know so yeah. when we try to uh, reject ourselves when when we abandon uh, sabotage ourselves we come from a place of self hate right so more than loving others we should first learn to love ourselves right and when we give ourselves the permission to love to be unconditionally present with us to fail to to make mistakes the doors just open up and they do and you know i want to just share that you know that's a why not another why not moment yeah why not it's a yeah. why not because why not love others knowing that you're going to be loved in the process why not also expect greater yes because of this beautiful lovely generous universe yes um that it responds based on our ability to say why not yeah i mean i believe this stuff i actually do um because i've seen it i know it happens once we determine that why not mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. or why not that right or why not whatever right then the universe says, well, hey, she believes it. Yeah. Let me help her out. Yeah. You know, let me allow the this to manifest. The universe meets you halfway. Correct. It's like when, when you kiss a lover, you go halfway, he comes halfway and meets you. It's yes. not, you know, always one person going all the way. That is kind of pushing. Right. You know, and, and if one person goes all the way, the, the chances of rejection are even more right so, so oh, when awesome. when you come halfway he comes halfway you meet at this middle ground you both have equal power in that connection wow so it's the same with the universe i may i make a step for myself you know i walk here i say yes to my desires i say yes to my failures oh. i say yes to my mistakes because all of that is a part of me yes it is different shades of colors of who I am. So when I come halfway, then the universe also meets me halfway and we have equal power. So it's cooperative. Yeah, it's co-creation. You know, I, I often meet a lot of people and I am guilty of this too, of saying, you know, just universe, come on, give it all to me. I really want this. I will listen to manifestation. Just bring it to me. But I, that's not co-creation. That's yeah. asking everything to be done for yeah. you. Yeah, and, and that doesn't happen because you are here to experience yourself. Mm -hmm. If everything is done for you, then you don't experience nothing. Right. Right. But that's, that's the easier way. Yeah. I, 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 you that's know. the easier way. But who wants to walk the easier way? We come here on earth for the adventure. For right. the journey, huh. for the roller coaster, because that is fun. That's why we pay so much money to go to Disney World so we can <laughs> have a roller coaster ride. Oh, yeah, that's true. Those rides and how can, much is that? Oh, those, my God. Those rides can be dangerous. You know, something can go wrong. There can be an accident. But we take the risk. But we take the risk because we want that pleasure of a few minutes up on that roller coaster because we like the roller coaster ride. And how long do we stand we, in those lines? We like the advent. Yeah. How many long, those long lines we do for those five minutes roller coaster and if how you don't have the fast pay, track, you're in the line for three hours. Because we want that experience. You can tell I go to Disney. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so that's the thing. Like yeah. we are here right. we want in the physical experience. life is because we want to experience ourselves. We do. And if, if everything is handed over to us in a silver platter, we will appreciate nothing. You're we so won't right. even know. We won't even know the value of that silver platter right so so that's the thing like we have to make that effort for ourselves to align with our desires to yes. align with our dreams align. and then the universe will you know match that uh, desire that dream and that's how manifestation happens you know you, you you really this is we're coming to the end of our show but i just want to share that what you're saying really reminds me of Oprah Winfrey because I was watching a show of hers and she was speaking. I don't remember what conference it was. I think it was the Essence Festival. And she was the keynote speaker. It wasn't supposed to be the keynote speaker. Her friend got sick and said, you're going to go speak. And right. that was not an accident either. Right. Um, but one of the things that she said was alignment. And she said to everybody, you know, you, everybody wants to know how I did what I'm doing. She said, I leaned in to my vision i leaned in to my gift and she said whatever that gift is if it's baking pies if it's um painting pictures if it's building houses if it's speaking if it's whatever it is lean into that 
that leaning in is alignment. Is that alignment. And alignment, taking that step towards your desires and dreams. Most people are totally misaligned from their dreams, desires. They are in jobs they hate. They are doing things they don't like. Are they, they trying are to be somebody else acquiring too? things, materials that don't matter to them, no. maybe just to show off to their peers. Uh -huh. They are trying to secure their lives instead of actually living it. So, you know, people are so much in a place of rejection, self-rejection, you know, and it pains me to see that. It does. You know, yeah. just for the money, just for the comfort, what extent they will go to instead of sitting back, like mm. relax, you know, and tune in. Tune you know, in. Tune in to yourself. There is no better music than yourself. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Right? For you. What Making a better? symphony. A symphony yeah. is going on inside of yeah. you. And and, and it's waiting for you to lift the curtain. Yes. You know? And go and uh, do your masterpiece. <laughs> Yo, the, the masterpiece. Yes. I love the masterpiece. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, create, this is, your masterpiece. create your masterpiece because, and you know who's waiting for the masterpiece? The world. The world. You know, you rob the world oh. of its magnificence when you stay small because you Another are not giving your gift to the world. The world is waiting to see your masterpiece. Go and create. And nobody else can do that. But nobody you. else because your soul signature is unique. Only you know wow. the song of your soul, and you have to sing it. Okay, that's the best place to end. I don't want to end, but we got to end. Yeah, I know. And the song of your masterpiece, listen, everybody, we all have that song within us. I really hope um, that you got as much out of this. I hope this was a why not moment for you, um, because it was certainly for me. We all have a song. We all have a masterpiece. The world is waiting for it. So let's tune in. Let's tune in, as Baishakia said, let's tune in to our song and go out and make good music. Think about your why not moment. And I really appreciate you. I appreciate the work you do. I appreciate the courage that you have. And I also appreciate the fact that you are willing to be open and you shared with us how to be open. And so would you like to also share your next upcoming venture and also how does someone get in contact with you? Yeah, sure. So I have a website, which is my name for BaisakiSaha.com. And it's also my blog where you can find all my work. And I have two books coming up. Mm -hmm. One is Life is Abracadabra, as I mentioned. And the other book is called Nrit which is a Sanskrit word for dance. Uh -huh. It's called The Dream of Finding the Self. So that's the subtitle. And that is a book that I would eventually like to turn into a movie. So wow. it's a very inspired story. It's based on true events, a deep uh, personal journey. And the, the story is really cool. And I initially wrote the story for a film. Then I turned it into a book. Wow. So now I will turn it back into a film. Well, I so. love to dance, by the way. I just, I, I, wow. Dancing is something I do all the time. I mean, it's, I just think it's the greatest expression right. of yourself. Right. And you don't even know you didn't know how to, yes. you know, yes. you can just dance. Get yeah. out there. It's movement, right? Yeah, and it's the dance of your soul. Like we talk about the song of our soul. So Nrit is the dance of the soul. That's beautiful. So it's a, it's a very interesting book and I am... I've finished writing it. I'm just in the process of publishing these two books. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations Thank you. And, and congratulations on what you do and your work and how you're going to continue to impact the world. Please come back um, sure. to the Why Not Incubator. I hope you can come back and share. I would love to. Okay. You know, it's, it's been such a pleasure to meet you here in LA. and. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this screen presence with you and with your audience. So I really appreciate it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've had such a great time. You're such an amazing person. Oh, thank and you. And you're doing such magical work on this planet, too, that, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that I met you. And I'm sure the universe helped us meet halfway, halfway. Yeah, halfway, halfway. <laughs> We've got the power. This is a, I call this person a real model. <laughs> not just a role oh, model. I like that. I like that. Real model. That's not right. Role model. Oh, She's a real God. model. And because we can like go back and hear her again. And we appreciate you. And I thank you so Yay. much. All right. Woo. <laughs> okay. That was good. Yeah.